Hello and welcome to episode 19 of the Hook on Owls podcast. My name is Lacey. This is a knit and crochet podcast full of all sorts of yarny, fibery talk. So hi to anyone new and welcome back to anyone returning. Um, we've had quite an increase in subscribers lately, which is fantastic. I know a great portion of that is due to the ever lovely Holly from The Proper Pineapple. Thank you so much, Holly, for co-hosting this um, Cal we've got going on with me and helping me grow my channel. And you're awesome, and I love you. <laughs> so, again, hi, everyone. Um, I know it's been a while since we've done an actual podcast. It's been like a month and a half since we've done an actual podcast. Um, I did do the, what's that called, Vlogtober. Um, I stuck with it best I could. I pretty much did the whole month. I think I actually missed a day, even though I did a lot of, like, combining of days. I think one still did slip by me. I planned on doing an actual podcast um, a lot sooner than this. <laughs> However, if you've followed any of my social media, you know it has been absolutely insane here. Um, right after Vlogtober, I needed a little bit of a break because it was just a lot. Um, I was on kind of a, just a mental health break from doing videos every day. Um, it, October, <laughs> if you've never tried it, it's quite taxing. Um, and I'm sure you heard that if you watched my Vlogtobers. I pretty much didn't have time for anything else. If I wasn't doing something with my family, I was recording something or thinking about something I had to record or editing to try and put one up and... It was pretty crazy. Um, so I have fallen way behind in all my podcast watching because I just needed pretty much a break. I didn't even log on to YouTube for a while because not only did I need a break, uh, <laughs> we had a death in the family and we had a round of flu hit four out of the five children. And then after that, the girl I was watching, she was gone for two days while the kids were homesick during the weekdays. I said, okay, I think we're in the clear. I've literally bleached my house and lice all everything. Bring her back. That day she got sick. Here. So I had to redo it again. And then, the next day, Josh and I both woke up with body aches and sore throats. So for the last couple days, I haven't had a voice. It's been awesome. Real great. Fantastic. Like, I like the change of the weather. It's wonderful to be able to wear all my fantastic, you know, woolly crochet and knit things. Sickness-wise, I'm pretty much over it. I've been living off of some hot tea lately. So now that I've explained why it's been a while, let's dive right into some things. So first of all, um, announcement. As I previously mentioned, I am doing a um, crochet along slash knit along with Holly from The Proper Pineapple. Hi, Holly! And uh, we are doing a Nerdy November Cal. Now, yes, I know it's already into November. Thankfully, I did m mention this earlier in one of my um, Vlogtobers. So hopefully you saw that. If not, you do still have time. Um, we are doing the Nerdy November Cal. Basically anything anything you're nerdy about. Anything you're passionate about. Um, I know, unfortunately, at this time we have had the passing of Stan Lee. So any, um, you know, comic fans, things like that. If you want to do a tribute piece, how amazing would that be? There's, you know, comic books. There's movies. There's, you know, fan cults that you could be part of. Even, you know... Recently, I've fallen into the My Favorite Murder fan cult. You guys, I'm going to see them in February with my sister. And I'm so excited. <laughs> I can't even begin. Can't even begin to tell you how excited I am to go see My Favorite Murder live. It's going to be amazing. Totally off topic. Um, you know, people like Twilight. People like Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, Harry Potter, Star Trek, Star Wars. There's a million things. And uh, some people have already done finished objects. And they're not, you know, so much like Harry Potter fandom kind of stuff. There are some, which are amazing. Um, we've had, like, 
dragons and a unicorn and just all sorts of like mythical fandom stuff, which is fantastic. I love that the definition of nerdy can go for anything. It can go for fandoms. It can go just for anything that you're just super nerdy, enthusiastic, geeky over. It's pretty open to interpretation. You can even just use like a nerdy colored yarn. You can use, you know, a pattern that has a nerdy name. Go for it. It's going to be great. The pattern, or the pattern, <laughs> no. The cal is running till the end of November. So um, there is a chatter thread and a finished object thread on my Ravelry, which is um, Hooked on Owls. And I just realized I didn't introduce myself, well, I did introduce myself, right? I think I did. Where to find me? I have a Hooked on Owls group on Ravelry. Um, Lacey1321 is my personal Ravelry account where you can uh, feel, free to, feel free to friend me. I do friend back. I am a friender. <laughs> um, also, you know, I don't think I made an announcement on there. Sorry, sidetracked. Um, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook as Hooked on Owls, all lowercase one word. Back on topic. On my Ravelry, um, the Hooked on Owls group, we have the finished objects thread and the chatter thread. I am drawing a prize from both. I have started getting some prizes together. I have a couple little packs ready to go. Um, I'm not going to show them because they're not finished yet. Right now, I'll each have a little, little like notions pouch, um, a really adorable tape measure. One's like a bunny, and one's like a little husky puppy, and um, a little Harry Potter inspired thing in one. And then they have some yarn. So if anybody is looking to donate some prizes to our nerdy November cow, let me know. I'll probably throw some patterns in there. And I am still looking to gather some more stuff for you guys because I want this to be a pretty awesome prize package because I like nerdy things. So why would I definitely not want to put more towards that? Um, it's running through the end of November, so make sure that you do get your um, entries in. Um, pretty much every entry or every time you talk in the chatter thread, that's an entry. Every finished object you have that you put in the finished object thread, that's an entry. Not only am I doing that for mine, but Holly from the Proper Pineapple is doing that with hers as well. So by doing this one cal, you have four chances at winning prizes. And Holly gives some really amazing prizes. I don't know how she finds the money and the time to get all these prizes together, but you should check her out because seriously, her prizes are always, her prizes are always amazing. I want them. Seriously, her prizes are great. <laughs> Um, I am going to apologize if you can't hear me very well because I am still getting over this yuck <laughs> and I'm sitting in my bedroom because it's comfortable and I can't find my microphone so I'm doing this on a different um, camera than I normally do so hopefully the volume is okay. Anyway, check out that cow. Make sure you get your entry in and I can't wait to see what you guys make. I'm so excited. We've already had, like I said, at least on mine, we've had quite a few um, finished objects already. So I think that's all I have for that, for announcements. Um, so we'll move on. Tonight, my In the Spotlight is my Latte Head Wrap. Um, I did release this a while ago. I believe I released it in October. It was one of my, one of my things. Um, I actually had it backwards right now. The... The little knotted piece is way back here because I just kind of wanted just the headband part on today. Which I think it looks cute with just the headband part. But I did release this pattern a little while ago. If you haven't grabbed your copy yet, um, I do have it for sale over on my Ravelry. I did have it for free for a little while. No, I didn't. Not this one. I had this one for a dollar off. I think it was. I had it like half off. But this one is over on my Ravelry account. On my Ravelry page if you wanted to check it out. Um, I did also release, I did this, I think I did this in October. I'm not sure if I showed you guys this or not. This is my Ashlyn hat. I think I showed it to you. It is done in the Happy Little Narwhal colorway by the Woman Homestead. Um, it's for my sister. I had done a hat this with this color for um, the Michigan Fiber Festival. And my sister loved it and the name of it, so she wanted a hat. And I didn't have enough left to make her a sock head hat, so I just kind of made up my own. 
because it was like a design your own hat month for the Wool Needles Hands podcast year of hats, Cal. <laughs> so, uh, double, double dipped there with my sister in that. Um, Ashlyn hat, I made up the pattern and it is actually free on my Ravelry account. It's my first knit pattern that I've posted, I believe. I had a couple, but I don't think I've ever posted them on there. But it is free, so if you are interested in, um, making the Ashlyn hat, it's free on Ravelry. It is a knit hat, and I did post about it on Instagram, so some of you guys, I know, I think I've got like almost 200 downloads on it already, which is pretty cool. She wants a white fur palm, so I'm waiting to um, make a trip to town to get that, which I'm actually going to have to make a trip to town very soon for another project I'll talk about in a minute. So yeah, that's my spotlight tonight, um, is my... Latte head wrap. It is done with Joy DK by Loops and Threads in the latte colorway. Like I said, it does have the little bump part back there. It's like a, a wrap if you haven't seen it. I'm sure I'll have posted some pictures. And I'm really sorry if this keeps shaking. I have it half on the bed. I'm, I'm not sorry, but I am sorry. I feel bad for you. Um, look at my nails. Aren't they fun? Can you see that? Is that going to focus? I normally do gel nails, but my mom had surgery on her shoulder, so she wasn't able to do them. So my friend Sarah, who I got to go see for her engagement dinner, um, gave me some of her color street that she sells. And they're like, I think it's the Mardi Gras color. It's like purple and blue sparkles, and it's super fun. This is just going to be all over the place, and I'm really sorry. <laughs> it's been a while. And now that I have my voice back, I really just feel like talking, so <laughs> I'll try to keep it as concise as possible. I really don't want these to be too long. Um, I have a couple other things I need to talk about, I know I need to talk about, that I'm going to end up putting on another, another episode here shortly anyway. Okay. So let's jump right into finished objects. Um, I think I have a couple. Obviously, my Ashlyn was one of them, if I haven't shown that to you yet. I know I showed you several during Vlogtober, so I'm not going to bother showing those. Um, my amazing In the Light shawl was one of them. I don't remember what else there was. <laughs> but just recently this month, I was asked by my cousin to make some of the Copycat CC Beanie hats. And I need one for myself now because, you guys, these things look so freaking cute on. Um, so this pattern is by, I had to write it down, Emily Ingrid. And it's the ever popular CC beanie hat. Hers is a little bit different than the actual CC beanie hat, which I think is good, but it looks very similar and it's very, very cute. I absolutely love it. I did, did do the buttons per request of my cousin. Um, she wanted those on. This one is for her, and this one is for her stepdaughter. They wanted the same hat, but a different shade, so they could at least tell them apart. <laughs> now, in Emily's, I keep wanting to say Ingrid, is your first name for some reason. Apologies. Um, Emily's pattern, to make it a messy bun beanie, she had you cut an elastic, thread it through the end, like you're doing a tie off, and then, like, tie the elastic, which I wasn't really comfortable with. So thankfully, being a crocheter, um, for my cast off, what I did was I went into the loop of my knit and I wrapped around, like I went underneath the elastic, grabbed the working yarn, pulled it underneath through, and then did a single crochet by grabbing the yarn over top. So I essentially, if you can see that, I just crocheted around with every single stitch around the elastic. Was that kind of genius? I feel like that was kind of genius. <laughs> like, I'm so happy I'm by stitchual because that made life so much easier and I feel like this is so much more secure than something tied now. You know what I mean? So I was pretty happy with that. Um, I gave him a nice wash and because it is acrylic, I just used um, Red Heart. She didn't want anything fancy. She wanted something easy to clean because she, like myself, has a lot of kids. Um, I believe her husband had already had three when they got married. 
and then they had another one, so they had like four kids. Um, so I just used, like I said, this is just acrylic Red Heart yarn, but it's, it really washes up soft. And I got some really amazing new soap. I got this really good Gaines that has like the scent boosters in it, and it smells really good. It smells really good. So I keep sniffing things. <laughs> And then, um, once I made these for her and her daughter, she um, was like, I really love them, and I know you're busy, but is there any way that you can make one for Eleanor, too, which is her little baby? So I made one for Eleanor. <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram, you'll have already seen all these, but, oh my goodness, look how precious this is. I did do um, two buttons still, but I bought some smaller ones that had like a dark brown feature on them. And then I put uh, my pre-made pom-pom on here. This is one that I have my video tutorial for that I do. This camera isn't as good as the other one. Oh well. So yeah. I made, because Eleanor doesn't have any hair, so <laughs> we did a pom-pom on that one. So now she's got a little gray double button beanies for her and her two girls. Well, I hope this fits. I totally just kind of guessed. I cut the size on this down. I think the, these were like 86 stitches. And then these ones were, or this one I think I did like hmm, 68? 72? I can't remember. I think I followed like the barley by Tim Cannon's stitch count, just to guess. Um, now, another thing about these is, you'll notice one thing is different. Um, the ribbing. This is like regular ribbing. And this one looks like twisted ribbing. Do you know why that is? Because I was doing twisted ribbing, or so I thought. I was actually only doing like a half twisted rib. If that's a thing, it's a thing now. I did a half twisted rib. And I folded one one way and one the other because when I started this one, you're supposed to start it with a provisional cast on. And then unstitch it and connect the two. Well, I read a thing about provisional cast ons that you could use like a crochet to start it and go around. And you guys, I'm picking that was a son of a bitch. Oh my God. I dropped things and it just took forever and I will probably never do that again. You can see I got like a little dropped whoopsie there. Um, yeah, so I was, I was still purling normal, but then I was knitting twisted. Does that make sense? I was doing both stitches through the middle. So I mean it was easy and it, I thought I was doing it right. Totally looks okay on this side, but this side is inside, so you can't see it. The other side looked like this, just like a normal, a normal ribbing. Either way, they turned out cute, um, and I apparently learned how to do a half twisted rib. So <laughs> there's that. I did have a slight freak out with this one. I was saving the um, the end, the tie-in end, and I was going to use it for this top button. And I went through and I tied on the bottom button and then I went and I kind of snipped the yarn and I snipped the wrong piece of yarn. I snipped that sucker right down at the base and I had not tied it off. So I like went through real quick, dug out, found it and like did like a tie off and stitched it up and oh my gosh, scared the crap out of me. The whole thing started to unravel for a minute. I had to sew it really fast and find it and... That was a panic moment, a serious panic moment. So yeah, there's those three that I did, which these were, um, thankfully it was Knitter's Choice for Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats Cal, so I did get to enter this as my, my hat of choice. Um, I also popped on there, I did a hat for Josh. Um, I used my splash of color yarns, um, the Woodland Camo color that I got from the Ann Arbor Fiber Expo. Um, I'm going to have to insert a picture. It's not a very good picture because the day I finished it, um, I t 
tied off. I think I had all the ends tied in because I was going to soak it and I didn't get a chance to. Um, and Josh decided he was going hunting and he needed that hat now. So <laughs> I'm like, let me take a picture real quick before I never see it again. So I took a picture real quick. It turned out good. It fits him fine. You know, it's nice and warm. Um, there's no real pattern. It's just one I kind of made up. Um, what I did was, because he ended up changing his mind from the face mask to a thick hat, I had bought, like, light fingering weight yarn to make, like, a thin mask to go over his other stuff or under his stuff. So I balled it up and held it double. Um, and then I did a half, the half twisted ribbing again. <laughs> And instead of doing the provisional cast on for him um, with the other ones, I had decided to do the same thing. I just did a long tail method cast on because that's pretty much all I do anyway. But I did the long tail cast on and that provides loops right at the end. So I just use those loops to pick up and stitch it together. It worked fine. Um, and then I just did several rounds. I think I did one round of pearl, seven rounds of knit, like stocking that, one round of pearl, seven rounds of knit, up and on, and then I did like a rapid decrease at the top to give it a slight slouch to kind of give him a little extra padding to hold in the heat. So he, he has worn it out twice. He apparently really likes it. Now his brother's asking me for one, but it used most of the yarn. I think I maybe have 15 grams left, which is not enough to make a hat, maybe 20. Cause I think Grayson was like, can I have a hat? I want a hunting hat. He says, I want a hunting hat. I don't have enough. So I'm going to have to probably get a little bit more of that. Maybe make Josh's brother one for Christmas or something. I don't know. So that's all my knit crochet whips. I don't think I had a crochet whip in there. I feel like I did. I'm pretty sure I'm forgetting something. I don't remember what. Um, I did, I'm not sure if I showed this off or not, but I did finish my first hand spun. Yay! It is, I'll never remember, Yak Cashmere Merino and Silk. It is um, from the Miller Girls. I ended up getting 65 grams from what I had bought. I don't know if this will focus good. Probably not. You know, I bought something new and I probably should be using it. I'm going to see if I can insert a picture of it. But yeah, so I'm not sure what I'm going to make with it. I might just keep it for a while um, to see, just to kind of see how far I've come. But I don't think it turned out too bad. I do have some spots that are like a fingering weight and some majority is like a worsted to bulky. But that's the fun part about hand spun is it's unique and it's unique. <laughs> I love the colors. I think it turned out really fun. Um, somebody asked me, oh, is it a two ply? I'm like, I don't know what it is. It's just spun. But now that I stop and think about it, I'm like, I didn't ply it together with another yarn. It's just a single ply. So nothing too fancy. It just looks like a two ply because of the way the colors were in there. It was pretty cool. If nothing else, it makes a really cool art yarn that maybe I can do something with. We'll see. So that's all my finished objects. Um, whips, I don't really have a whole lot yet. I'm going to. I have a long list of things to do. I have to do um, some more unicorns, um, some more hats, some. I have a other couple commissions that I got to finish before Christmas. And Lord only knows what else I'm going to do. Um, the only thing I have, I shouldn't say the only thing. The first thing I'm working on is um, this little guy. You notice, you notice an issue here? Um, I had done this as a commission a while ago for um, a repeat customer named Ben, who's awesome. He's very patient with me. <laughs> Apparently his mom had a lot of kids too, so he understands what having a big family is like. So thanks for being awesome, Ben. <laughs> Um, I made this go around for Ben a while ago, and he loves him, 
and he wants me to make another one um, that's a slightly different version um, along with the other Goran's hammer. So those are two things that I'm going to be working on ASAP because he does want them for the holidays, which is cool. This guy he sent back because his little doggy got a hold of it. So um, Mr. Goran has since received a bath since he came back, and he did have a stray um, couple of hairs back here from little teeth but pulling on them, so I did cut those off. Now the only issue we're going to have here is his eye got bit off. So I'm going to have to do some Goran surgery. Um, and this is probably going to end up being my own nerdy thing because um, if you don't know, Gorons are from the video game Legend of Zelda. And I'll have to do a second one, so I'll have, I'll have a couple things in there, but only problem I'm having is, um, it is a safety eye, so yes, it did not come out, <laughs> which is cool, but somehow I have to get it out, and then I have to put a new one in. I also don't have any eyes in that size. So I have to go to town, um, which is over an hour away. Well, about an hour away. But that's okay. Because the new Fantastic Beasts movie is coming out this weekend, so I kind of have to go anyway. It's, it's perfect. Perfect timing, right? I think so. So, yep. I have to somehow magically replace this eye. If any of you have done this, because my, my stitching is very tight. Um, if any of you have replaced a safety eye that has a fairly large back, it's about that big tips would be appreciated. <laughs> Thinking about just kind of shoving it in and seeing if I can somehow finagle another one in there. I don't know. We'll figure it out hopefully. I don't want to have to remake him. But he'll be getting, I believe it's a leader to go with him soon. So keep your eyes open for that in the next episode. And that's all I've really got to say about that. Like I said, I've got some unicorns and other things to make. I have not started anything because I've just been feeling like crap. Um, I literally laid on the couch yesterday for most of the day. And then the second half of the day when I started to feel a bit better, finally, I um, organized the crap out of my yarn. And I didn't bring it in with me. I'm going to be doing a video pretty quick here. I have a giant bag full of yarn that I want to get rid of. So we're going to be doing some giveaway. I'm not even going to put it in for prizes because a lot of it is actually like, a, it's all, a lot of it's acrylic. I think the majority of it is acrylic and I'm keeping a lot of acrylic. So don't think I'm just trying to like pawn off my acrylic on you guys <laughs> because that's not the case. I use acrylic for everything. Like all my amigurumi and all my toys are done in acrylic. A lot of hats and stuff I do are done in acrylic. Um, a lot of baby blankets are done in acrylic just for pure ease of washing them. So it's not a, I need to get rid of my acrylic. It's, I have too much freaking yarn and nowhere to put it. It's like overflowing my work area. Stuff that I still have from years ago that I haven't touched, that I'm not going to touch. Like I, it's insane. I have color, a lot of things are, I have colors that are like brand new. They got a little like messed up from being shoved into drawers, so I did just kind of like skein a lot of them back up to make them look nicer and organize them so that there's not yarn flying everywhere. But some of them I haven't even touched at all. So a lot I, I've had some given to me too that I'm not going to use. So, um, keep your eyes open pretty quick here for an episode where I'm just going to be doing a giveaway. So, if you like acrylic yarn, if you like free yarn, if you like yarn that you really don't know what the composition is of it because I don't have a clue. <laughs> if you like some partial skeins, like mini skeins of acrylic, just some random little pieces, um, keep your eyes open because I'm going to be doing some giveaways of stuff that I just don't have room for, basically. I need to downsize. It's been like two full days of organizing this stuff and I've been binge watching the show Meat Eaters on Netflix. So now Josh has a deer out back um, that's hung. 
he did get one so far. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to use all these different cuts that I never did before because I watched this and Steve Renova made it this way and da 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 da. And all of a sudden I'm like, hmm, maybe I should tan that hide too and like make something with deer hide and deer fur. I mean, it sounds weird and it sounds barbaric, I'm sure. But I really hate wasting an animal. Like, if we're going to use it for meat, yes, that's awesome. We do very much. It's not a trophy hunt thing. It's a meat for our family. It's a very great lean source of protein, and we have a large family. So it really, it's a sport Josh does enjoy, but it also provides for our family. A big chunk of our grocery bill is cut by using venison for everything. We haven't had venison for a while, so our grocery bill is quite substantial, and I'm very excited for it to go back down. So we'll be processing that soon, but I hated how much waste there was because, you know, there were cuts of meat that I just didn't know what to do with because there was so much, you know, so much to work with or whatever. Um, I've been doing a lot of research on minimalizing the waste from an animal that we are processing. It, you know, I'm sorry for anybody that's like, totally vegan, but please know that I'm trying to do my, my part in wasting, not wasting any, any part of the animal. So I have been thinking about like finding a way to, um, I shouldn't say finding a way. I know there's a way to tan hides. I've been doing some research into it. I am thinking about asking Josh to save me the hides and putting in the work to use it e either for leather which looks like a lot more work than just leaving the fur on. So um, I might be trying to figure out some fur projects. So if anybody has any any fur projects other than, I wonder if they would make, I wonder if they'd make good pom-poms. Maybe I could make some deer pom-poms. <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, off topic. What should we talk about now? I know. Have you guys heard about the Get Your Yarn Wishes Granted on Instagram? This year was awesome. Um, last year, I kind of heard about it towards the tail end, and I was able to um, send Hannah from the Cozy Cottage Crochet. I was able to send her something for her yarn wish. I gave her, like, a skein of um, hand-dyed yarn. Pardon the reach. This year, I was gifted um, some really lovely things. I think I was able to um, do... Let me quick count. Eight? I did eight this year. I provided, uh, I did a lot of patterns, um, because I had a lot of people, like, I went through the Get Your Yarn Wishes Granted, and I kind of found ones from people that were, didn't have quite as high of a following. You know, they only had, like, five legs on their post, or three legs on their post. And I went through and saw what they wanted, and a lot of them wanted patterns which I thought was cool and really easy and simple. So I went through and I bought a lot of patterns for people. Um, Cause patterns are always fun to get. And some of them are, you're kind of like, it's funny. I can't justify, like I look at it and I'm like, Oh, can I really spend $7 on a sweater pattern right now? And then the get your yarn wishes granted pops up and I'm like, you want a pattern? This sweater is adorable. $7. No problem. Here you go. There's a sweater pattern. And I'm like, would I have done that for myself? <laughs> but you know what? It's the season of giving, right? Like, yeah, I know it's not quite Christmas time yet, but this is a great way to start that mentality of a season of giving. So I did a lot of patterns. Um, I actually have some yarn for one person that I have to um, get to them. I have, I just sent out Holly um, from the Yarn Journey podcast. Uh, I think I bought her a pattern too, and then I sent her out, um, a bag of minis, because she wanted some minis, so I sent her out a bag of minis, and I labeled each one, um, what the mini came from, like, what project of mine it came from, so I know she got one from, like, my Jareth shawl, and, um, I can't even remember, I sent her a bunch of minis, though, and just a little bag full of goodies, so... She should be getting that this weekend. Hopefully she enjoys it. And I have a couple other ones I need to send out yet. Um, first and foremost, oh, I get my kid's stepmom, Elise, 
whom I've mentioned before, you guys, I know a lot of people have really crappy relationships with their exes and their spouses. My, my relationship with my ex isn't exactly fantastic, but his spouse is awesome. <laughs> um, Elise and I, we get along pretty good. Like majority of communication goes through her and I gifted her a pattern and she so asked me, she's like, is the clover like a brand of a hook? I'm like, yeah. And she, she bought me a hook. So that was really sweet. So thank you, Elise. I do have some yarn I want to give you. Um, some blue yarn. I'm going to open this because... If you guys have never heard of a clover and more hooks, I know I've talked about them before. These things are dreamy. Oh, man. And it's an eight check, and I don't have that one. Super excited. So, Lee sent me that. I know Holly said she's sending me some minis. Um, I had asked for, for my yarn wishes, I had asked for basically minis. And um, clover hooks. And... Pardon the sniffles. I'm, I'm sorry. I've already apologized. You already know I'm sick. <laughs> um, I asked for minis and clover Amora hooks in any size. And then my unicorn wishes were like, um, you know, specific brands of yarn. Um, I think it was, yes, this one. Uh, let me just... The bag... I got these all in the mail today, so I haven't even, like, wrote them, told them I got them and thanked them yet. Um, Taylor from, I wanted to make sure I got this right, the Magnolia Makes, on, I believe she's the Magnolia Makes on Instagram, too. I'll have to double check it. Um, she saw my post that I wanted some minis, and you guys, she hooked me up. She did a little hashtag, get your yarn wishes granted. Enjoy, Taylor from Magnolia Makes. You probably can't see that. <laughs> she sent me this bag full of minis. Oh my goodness, there's, it ripped in, in shipping. So there's a little, <laughs> we had a little spillage. Um, she sent me some amazing looking yarns. This one, oh, you can't even. Hmm. I wish this focused better. There's one. This one's like this really cool black and orange. Like I wish I knew the names for some of these because they are really freaking cool. And this one here. Look at that gorgeous beastie. It's purple, teal, and black, you guys. <gasps> my heart exploded slightly when I saw this, okay? Now, my son was in the car with me and I'm like squealing as I'm going through this gorgeous bag of minis. Taylor, you're amazing. Uh, not only that, let me find the right one. She had this one. Yes. She had this bag shoved inside the minis because she had a mini from one of my unicorn dyers who is um, Molly from Homespun House. And not only did she send me a, a mini from Homespun House, you guys, this is from the Hog, uh, Christmas at Hogwarts, from her Harry Potter Christmas one from 2017. And this is going to blow out. Let me figure this. Mm, you still can't see it. It's going to blow out because it's crazy. I'll see if I can take a picture. It's really light. Um, it's just got all sorts of different speckles in it, like this salmon-y color, um, a very bright spring green. And then like these deep blacks and blues and it's so pretty. Oh my gosh. <gasps> this is my first homespun house. <laughs> it's just a mini, but I'm so excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> I absolutely love it. And the fact that it's Harry Potter, it just makes it so much better. Not only is it a homespun house, it's a Harry Potter homespun house. And that's amazing. Then she sent me this amazing little black card, which was in this envelope that had this little llama on it. <laughs> so cute. She sent me my bag, and all her bags have these cute little Christmassy gear on them. Love. And you guys, it's full of tea. Not only is it full of tea, it's like all my favorite flavors. Glazed lemon loaf, vanilla bean macaroon. This one is a caramel. 
an Earl Grey, mm -hmm. a chamomile, and then a chai. I'm not, I haven't tried this chai. I'm going to give it a try. I've tried a couple chais and I'm not the biggest fan, but all of these are literally like my favorite kinds of teas. I like the herbal floral, not, not like the fruity, orangey, whatever's, but the, the dessert teas. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. I'm going to be drinking some more tea later. Then, I ended up um, following her on her Instagram, and she was doing a reverse, um, <laughs> get your yarn wishes granted in reverse. And she posted that she had this extra Halloween bag, and I was like, well, that's freaking adorable. So she sent it to me. <laughs> Look at this bag, you guys. How adorable are all these little Halloween guys? <laughs> and this is a big bag. It's just a pink lining little zipper. It's adorable. So it was so sweet of her to send me this bag to go with it. Thank you so much. I freaking love it. I'm pretty sure I've said freaking about like 12 times now. I love it. This might be a new home for my minis because... Ooh, I'm going to hit the camera. Not only did you send me a bunch, which I'm dumping in there, the sweet Kim, Kim and I um, have had quite a few conversations on Instagram now, and I just love her to bits. She's so sweet. She sent me a package, too, of mini. She wanted to grant my yarn wishes. I'm going to show you the back. Here we go. She cut it in little owl stickers, and then she sent me a couple sheets of little owl stickers. <laughs> Cute. My kids are probably going to run off with them if I don't hide them. Um, she sent me a little note, and it says, From one yarn lover to another, have a great season, Kimberly. And Kim sent me some gorgeous minis. She also sent me some gorgeous teas. A lemon ginger. A dry desert lime. That's the one I wanted to tell you, because I'm very excited to try that. Um, and also a an, um, Moroccan mint. Now, this brand, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it, because I'm sure, even though it looks simple, it probably, I'd probably slaughter it. They make a um, jasmine tea that I just loved. So good. And then, this one is a, it's called Balance. It has like a sweet lemony chamomile blackberry. That sounds interesting. And then this one's Embrace, and it's got hibiscus, floral, rose, and cinnamon. Very exciting flavors there. And look at this bag. She sent me a mini easy bag. <gasps> oh, gorgeous much. Not only that, this one caught my eye. Because I've been looking at this um, dyer for a while. And I started following them. This one is the Old Rusted Chair. In their Stay Cool colorway. Like, these are full-on legit minis, too. So, oh my gosh, thank you. You totally didn't need to give me, like, real mini minis. Like, these little, little ones. The thing, the really cool thing about these ones is you know she made something with these. So, it's really kind of neat to be like, I wonder what you made with each one of these. That's why I wrote that on Holly's. So, Holly will be able to look at it and go, oh, she made this with this yarn. I think that's just kind of cool to know. To know that somebody made something with this yarn. It's just kind of fun. This one's got these gorgeous little stripey colors to it. Really pretty little stripy blue with some greens in there. There's a couple. She sent me some really, really pretty ones too. Now this one. I'm looking at this. And I'll be damned if this don't look familiar. This looks just, just like... A Northern Bee Studio yarn. And I think I have a couple minis in this because it's one I bought to go with my other ones from the Fiber Festivals. It really looks like it. Kim, if you watch this, is this Northern Bee Studios? Because I feel like it is. It looks just like one of the greens I have from them. It actually looks a lot like the green I have from uh, Rainbow Rapunzel, too. <laughs> But she has these minis. Let me see. 
I'm gonna check. The other ones are really pretty too. That one's like rainbowy. This one. These two are both really gorgeous. This one's really pretty. All these gorgeous blues with speckles and tunnels and bits of green again. I need to know where this one came from. Because I'm quite infatuated with it. It's this grayish blue and white. And then it's just got this overlay. Like right here there's some hot pinks. Some real poppy blue colors. Some purpley blues. And then there's also black and orange and green. And like a burnt rusty color. And it's simply freaking stunning. I'm quite in love with this one. You spoiled me, Kim. Thank you. You guys, I really, I did get spoiled a lot um, this year. And I'm very thankful and very appreciative to everyone for sending me things. I know, um, like I said, Holly said she's sending me some minis too. So I cannot wait to see what Holly is sending me because Holly's awesome too. <laughs> so there's that. Um, I feel like I only have a little bit more to talk about, so hopefully this won't last for too much longer. Because I know I wanted to try and keep smaller episodes, but it's been a while, so this one's going to be kind of long. I apologize. From here on out, I'm going to try and keep it a bit smaller and more frequent for you guys. Um, a couple acquisitions. I was at Walmart to pick up some stuff and um, I haven't exactly been in the Christmas mood but they had a, oh I forgot the Halloween one you guys I got this really like yard bolt thing of not bolt a yard of um, some Halloween fabric it's black with Halloween candy on it and then the suckers have like little skulls in them and I got a yard of it for like 36 cents that's awesome but they have their fat quarters um, for, you know, 97 cents or whatever. And they have their holiday ones out now. So, Luna, your earthquake in the camera. Luna, Luna. <laughs> she went and got a puppy spa day the other day. So she felt pretty cool coming home with her little fancy bow on. Um, but anyway, I picked up. This really pretty gray one with like um, white and bronzy gold stars on it. This really cute little knit pattern looking one. And then I actually, these two, I found out they're, they're the same. They just have like a different background. Um, just these really cute little snowmen, snowflakes, and reindeer and penguins. Actually, this one might just be penguins and snowmen and trees. And then this one has the penguins, snowmen, Santa and reindeer and teal so I was kind of thinking I might do like these ones together and then these ones together or try and do like these ones together I guess we'll see but I'm going to try and make myself some um, Christmas time bags we'll see and if I don't like them maybe they'll go for prizes you know, I keep thinking I've got a lot of stuff that I've made that I don't use because I'm one of those people that I have like my comfort things where I wear like my same five things over and over again. So I'm thinking about maybe putting, I don't really want to reopen my Etsy because they charge an arm and a leg. Maybe I'll just do like an Instagram or a Facebook, like if you want to buy something of mine you know, do it through PayPal or something I don't know I'll think about it because I have a bunch of stuff that's just sitting there and I haven't been doing any shows lately and I feel bad just having all my pretty knits and crochets just sitting around not being used because I have my favorites <laughs> and I have bags that I've made that I've been using bags by other people like Fates Threads oh my gosh her bags and then Kim from Chasing Acorns. Oh, her bags. And my striped tangerine bag. Pretty much any bag I've bought or been given, I love. Um, and my last big purchase that is 
podcast related. I'm not using it right now, but I bought a camera um, with my money that I went and got from the pumpkin farm. I was able to, um, I had enough to buy groceries for two weeks and a new camera. It's uh, a Canon power shop. Um, I had zero plans on buying a camera. <laughs> um, but I had two patterns that I needed to get into um, the magazine like a month ago. <laughs> but I've been so occupied or preoccupied that I didn't realize that they needed to be in like a month ago. And she said, well, if you have them ready, I'll take them. I'm like, cool. Um, my photographer is not... <laughs> available. So I bought a camera and I did a self photo shoot <laughs> same day <laughs> and sent out the patterns and she said cool thanks. I'm like okay fantastic. So yeah bought a camera. Super excited about that. Um, I really like it. It's a nice camera. Like it's funny because the pictures on here look kind of crappy but as soon as you put them on the computer they look fantastic. So I might try and do a podcast recording on here, but the problem is I do my editing on my phone, so I'm not sure. I haven't edited on YouTube, so I'm not sure how uh, how comfortable I am with that, but we'll see. We'll figure it out. And last thing that I bought that is totally not knit or crochet related, but it is nerdy. So we're going to throw that in with the nerdy November is... I got one of the Harry Potter mystery ones. Actually, I bought two. Um, my best friend, Sarah, and I, went, I went to go see her for her anniversary dinner. And when we met, many years ago now, um, I didn't, I, I got sat by her because we worked together. And my boss sat me by her because I didn't think she knew about the job. So she's like, well, you can sit with her and you can train her if she needs any help. Well, we, you know, made small talk pleasantries for, like, the first week. And she didn't ask any questions except for, you know, unless something was really kind of complicated. And then I realized she wasn't just kind of flighty. She just understood it, so she didn't need to ask questions or pay attention. <laughs> One day, she's on the phone next to me. We worked at a call center at the time. And she goes, okay, thank you, Mr. Lockhart. And I look at her, and she's like, right? And we had this instant understanding that we're both Harry Potter nerds. And we've been best friends ever since. So, <laughs> um, I bought her a wand and I bought me a wand. And I let her pick one. And then we opened them together. She got a Nymphador Tonks wand. Which I feel like we probably should have traded because I'm way more of a Tonks. And she's way more of a Hermione. And that's who I got. Which, the wand is gorgeous. And I didn't think about it at the time, but we probably should have traded um, this is my Hermione wand. These things are really nice quality, too. They're pretty hefty. It's really pretty, isn't it? I love it. Um, Tonks wand has these cool, like, spades coming off the sides of lighter, lighter wood. But she's much more of a Hermione, and I'm much more of a Tonks. So, we probably should have traded, but at the same point in time, it's kind of like, I see it and I think of Sarah, so... <laughs> You know, she'll see that one and think, that's more lacy. But then it's kind of like having a little piece of each other. She moved like almost like two hours away. So we really never see each other anymore and it's very sad. So this is like having a little piece of her close to me. Which is also super nerdy. <laughs> so I think that's pretty much it, you guys. Um, I know I probably have a lot more to talk about. Oh! Not only that, I forgot to tell you. Yeah, you know, on top of all my craziness that we've had happen between, um, you know, the random crazy unexpected death and all the sicknesses that have been purging through the house, I woke up this morning finally feeling good. Um, and our pipes froze. So not only did we have a pipe break not that long ago, apparently something happened with one of our cords or the heat tape or we're not really sure but we fixed it it's good our pipes are fine now but it, it took about half the day which sucked so yeah it's been it's been crazy here um yeah it's been like an hour so i should probably wrap this up and that's all i got anyway i'm pretty sure so 
I might write up that um, hunting hat pattern if anybody's interested. Just let me know. It'll probably just be another free pattern. Um, so yeah, that's all I've got for today. And I will be checking in with you guys a little bit later this month. Hopefully um, by next week I want to get out a couple more videos that I have planned, including maybe some, doing some giveaway. It's going to take a while to give away the big chunks of yarn because I kind of want to break them up into like groups of colors or things that go together. So I'll be doing a couple giveaways. Um, maybe I'll save them for Christmas time? Maybe not. Anyway, keep your eye open for some giveaways. Um, I have some tutorials planned now that I have a voice and hopefully people don't get sick again so I can find some time to, you know, not be up at midnight with children. <laughs> oh, it's been, it's been lovely. So yeah, now that things seem to be kind of coming back around to the normal, hopefully we can get things back where I can get on a schedule and pump out some podcasts for you guys. So until next time, happy crafting. We'll see you later.